Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're talking about how you can strum through a song called Atlas by Coldplay. And it starts out with a really, really cool intro lick, and we're going to end up capoing this on fourth fret to kind of match the recording. But we're going to start actually with, with kind of a cool little D5 uh, in position, where you take your first finger and you go to the G string on the second fret, second finger on the B string on the third fret, and if you take your pinky, you can go to the high on the fifth fret. And if you kind of strum just the D, G, B, and E, that's one way to play something called a D5 high power mode actually. And what, what it kind of sounds like in the piano intro at the beginning is kind of like a little arpeggio around that chord where you can play the D string, the G string, and then the high E string, and then the B string. So you kind of go in D, A, E, B, D, G, E, B, D, G, E, B. It's kind of like a little arpeggio. And then a, a lot of times though, with a song like this though, a lot of times I'll use strum patterns and actually there's a couple that'll work with the song. So just to kind of go over those, um, it, you could kind of kind of work a lot of the song actually is kind of three downs on, on each chord, almost like, like kind of little hits. Um, another way you could kind of work it is using one of my, my favorite 4-4 four, four strum patterns, which is down, down, up, up, down, up. And actually th this is kind of weird. You may have to kind of feel this very slow actually kind of match it with the recording. We got down, down, up. strum pattern that I really recommend actually is, is kind of a 16th note strum pattern and this is a little weird but if you're tapping your foot to the B right now the down down up up down kind of divides that beat into two parts one two one two one two what a 16th note is is where you divide that foot tap into four parts one two three four one two three four and what I think really feels really good for the recording is kind of a down up up down up up down up down up 16th note strum pattern and what I mean by you'll do a down on one and an up on four so if you're counting four you have one two Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, down, up, down, up, down, up on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you do an up on two, down on three. So you'd be on one, two, three, four, one, up, down, one, up, down, one, up, down, one, up, down, one, up, down. And then on the third beat, you'd be doing an up on two, up on four. So you'd be on one, two, three, four, one, up, up, one, up. Down right along with the one, two, three, four. So you got down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So all together you got down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. There's a couple different ways you can kind of enter the song. And then from there, then we'd be going into our verse part. And our verse starts on a D minor chord. And we play D minor. First finger is going to go to the high on the first fret. Second finger on the G string on the second fret. Third finger is going to go to the B string on the third fret. And if you kind of strum just the D string to the high E string, that sounds like a D minor chord. And it sounds really, really sad. And then from the D minor, we're going to be going to an E minor chord. And we play E minor. First finger is going to go to the A on the second fret. The second finger on the D string on the second fret. If you strum all those together, that sounds like an E minor chord. It sounds really, really sad. And then from the E minor, we're going to go to a G minor chord. This is kind of kind of tricky. You can do first finger as a third fret bar, third finger on the A string on the fifth fret, and the pinky on the D string on the fifth fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like a G minor. It sounds really, really sad. Now another substitution for that would be kind of lifting off the pinky, so you can kind of make it a G minor 7. So that might end up being a little bit easier. Kind of trying to avoid the bars though, you can kind of take that and make it a smaller version of the chord by barring you know, smaller versions of strings. So you can take the top two strings on the, on the third fret, or the top three strings on the third fret, any of those can substitute in for your G minor chord. And then from there, then we go to a D major chord. When we play D major, first finger is going to go to the G on the second fret, second finger is going to go to the high e on the second fret, and third finger goes to the B string on the third fret. And if you strum just the D, G, B, and E, that sounds a D major chord. It sounds really, really happy. And then from the D major, we're going to go to an A minor chord. We play A minor. First finger is going to go to the B string on the first fret. Second finger on the D string on the second fret. And third finger on the G string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A minor chord. And it sounds really, really sad. And then from the A minor, we're going to go to an E major chord. First finger goes to the G on the first fret, second finger on the A string on the second fret, and third finger on the D string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, it sounds like E major chord and it sounds really, really happy. 
And another possibility actually is, is from the E major, we're going to be going to an E7 chord. There's a couple different ways you can play it. Play it. One way to play E7 is just lift off the third finger from the E major. So now I got first finger on the G string, first fret, second finger on the A string, second fret. Another way to do it is to take the E major shape and then take your pinky and kind of add him in on the B string on the third fret. That's another way you can play E7. And then from the E7, we're going to be going to an A minor chord. So we go back to that. So through your whole verse, you got kind of D minor, E minor, G minor. D major, A minor, E major, E7, A minor. So you could kind of work that as kind of those three downs. We'd have D minor, E minor, G minor. Try that with the down, down, up, up, down, up. And then you have D minor with the down, down, up, down, D minor, down, down, up, down, G minor, down, down, up, down, D major, down, down, up, down, A minor, down, down, up, down, D major, down, down, up, down, G minor, down, down, up, down, D seven, down, down, up, down, A minor, down, down, up. Or we could use our 16th note strum pattern. And then from there, we're going to be going into our pre chorus part. And our pre chorus starts on a C major chord. And when we play C major, first finger is going to stay on the B string, first fret, second finger on the D string, second fret, and the third finger on the A string on the third fret. And if you strum the A string with a high E string, that sounds a C major chord. It sounds really, really happy. And then from the C, we're going to be going to the D minor. And then we kind of have almost kind of a half C major and then an E major. And then we go to A minor. And then we go to a D minor. And then we go to an E major. And then we go back to D minor. And then we go to a G major chord. And then we play G major. First finger goes to the A on the second fret. Second finger on the low E string on the third fret. And the third finger on the high E string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord. It sounds really, really happy. Could kind of do that that same kind of three downs on each chord through the pre-chorus. You have kind of C, D minor, but then we get to the C and you may want to kind of do big C, E major, and then an A minor, D minor, E major, D minor, G major. Or you can try that with a down, down, up, up, down, up. And the weird part about that is when you get to that C and E, we just do a down, down up on each chord. So we have C with a down, down, up, up, down, D minor, down, down, up, up, down, C, down, down, D major, down, down, A minor, down, down, up, up, down, D minor, down, down, up, up, down, D major, down, down, up, up, down, D minor, down, down, up, up, down, G, down, down, up, up, down, up. And then from there, then we'd be going into our chorus part. And our chorus starts on a D major chord. And then from the D major, then we go to A minor. And then we go to C major. And then we go to the G major chord. So we kind of tried that with the three hits. We got D major, A minor. second verse, but our second verse actually substitutes in some F majors for D minor chords. And when we play F major, first finger goes across the entire first fret, second finger on the G on the second fret, third finger on the A string on the third fret, and the pinky on the D string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like F major chord and it sounds really, really happy. Um, but if you're just starting out, you just want to avoid bar chords, you get substitute for that can be F major 7. When we play F major 7, First finger goes to the B on the first fret, second finger on the G on the second fret, third finger on the D string on the, on the third fret, and we kind of strum just the D, G, B, and E, just like the D chords actually, and that'll get you a clear sound that. That's called F major 7. And then from the F major 7 on our second verses, everything else kind of stays the same. We start off F, E minor, G minor, D major, A minor, E major, E7, 
seven A minor. So we end up kind of substituting in some of the S for the pre-chorus and then our last chorus. And then we end up on our outro. And on our outro, we start on the F major. And then we go to an E major chord. But then we go to an E flat major chord. And one really easy way to do an E flat major is to take your D shape that we were on. And if you slide it over one fret. So now i got first finger on the G string, third fret. Second finger on the high E on the second fret, or third fret. Third finger on the B string on the fourth fret. And if you kind of strum just the G, B, and E, kind of the skinny three strings, actually, that'll get you a clear sound of that. It's called E flat major. And then we end up with a D major at the very, very end. So the very, very end, actually, after kind of an extended chorus, we got kind of F, E major, E flat, D major, kind of at the very, very end. Now, the weird part is to play along with Coldplay, though, instead of starting on a D5, they're actually starting on and F sharp five. <laughs> so what you want to do to play along with the recording is if you take a capo and you put it up on fourth fret, then now your D five that we started out with is really an F sharp five. Your D minor is really an F sharp minor. Your E minor is really an F, a G sharp minor. Your G minor is really a B minor. And your D major is really a D major or F sharp major. Your A minor is really C sharp minor. E major is really G sharp major, and then when we get to it, the C major chord is really an E major chord, and then your let's see, G major is really a B major chord, and then the oh, and the F major would, would really be an, an A major. But just to take it from the very, very beginning, you may want to start with kind of that arpeggio that we were kind of talking about in the D5, because that could be a cool way to kind of intro the tune. Or you could kind of work those strum patterns. You could do those three downs. Or you could do the down, down, up, up, down, up. Or you could do the down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. So down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. And then from the intro, then we go into our first verse. So we try that with our three downs. We have D minor, E minor. Our 
three downs on each of those two. We have D, A minor, C, G, D, A minor, C, G. Or we could do down, down, up, up, down, up. And then we have D with a down, down, chart with the 16th pattern. We have to do with the down, up, up, down, up, up, down, 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 now something else I would think about adding to the song too is bass notes. And a lot of times on that first down, especially if you're working down, down, up, up, down, up, or the 16th pattern, you can kind of throw in a bass for the chord. So for instance, on the F major that starts off our second verse, you do the low E string for your bass, you're doing the bar F major, bass, down, up, up, down, down, the low E bass, down, up, up, down. On the F major 7, you have the, the D string for your bass. And then on the E minor chord, you have the low E string for your bass. So low E bass, down, up. Up down on the G minor bar, you have the low E string for your bass on the G or the G major. And then on the D, we'd have the D string for the bass. And then we get to the A minor, we'd have the A string for the bass. And then on your E major and your E7 chord, we have the low E string for your bass. So we could kind of try it that way. So if we tried the, the, the second verse with kind of a bass down, up, up, down, up. We'd have an F with a bass down, up, up, down, E minor with a bass down, up, up, down, G minor with a bass down, up. into your 16th pattern and you could kind of have kind of a bass up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, it's kind of kind of your bass. So we tried it that way, you'd have bass up, up, down, up, up, down, E minor with low E bass, G minor with low E bass, D with the D bass, A minor with the A bass, E major with low E bass. into our second pre-chorus. And our second pre-chorus, some of those D minors at the end actually are, are kind of F major chords. So we could kind of take that bass down, up, up, down, up idea and kind of work it through that. And if we tried it that way, the weird part is where we get to the C and the E. And I'll notice you can kind of work it as kind of a bass down, up, like chord. So we tried it that way, we'd have C with an A bass, down, up, up, down, D minor with an E bass, down, up, up, down, C with an A bass, down, E with a little E bass, down, A minor with an A bass, down, up, up, down, F with a bass, down, up, or if we try that with the bass 16th pattern. Well, um, the weird part is where we get the C and E, we'd have kind of a bass down, down, up for those two chords. So if we tried it that way, you'd have C with the bass, up, up, down, up, up, down, down, E minor with the bass, C with an A bass, down, down, E with the low E bass, down, down, E minor with the A bass, up, up, down, up, up, down, 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 up
really just sounds like big down. So you may just want to kind of work kind of a major, E major, E flat, and then D is kind of our outro. Now there's also a really cool little way that you could kind of do that too, kind of working in arpeggio, kind of like the intro loop, where you could kind of start off, and this is kind of working just a D bass, because I think this could be kind of a cool thing. If you put your first finger on what would have been fifth fret on the G string, which is really ninth fret, and second finger on the high E on the, on the ninth fret, you could kind of work kind of a, a D, G, high E string arpeggio, and that could be kind of a cool way to kind of end it on that for the F chord. And then if you slide it back one fret, that kind of implies the E major, slide it back one more fret, the third fret, that kind of implies the E flat. And then you may want to kind of hit a little D at the very end. So that might be kind of an interesting thing, because so you'd be coming out of the G in the chorus. Here. Completely crazy little invention here, but that might be kind of a cool way to kind of end it, as far as outro licks go. But that's the basics of how you can strum through Atlas by Coldplay, so good luck!